My name is Chris King and I'm one of the developers on the Speedtree team. Uh, in this informal video I'll walk you through the Speedtree for Games pipeline from the modeler to the compiler and finally to the SDK. Okay, so we want to start with the modeler application which is where trees are created and edited uh, for the Speedtree pipeline and I've already selected a couple here for us to start with. This is the Curly Palm model which is uh, you know, somewhat uh, high detail. It's got 13,000 triangles, and you can see in wireframe here that we've got a lot of triangles dedicated to the palm fronds for a nice wind effect. I've also selected the sugar maple, uh, which we moved away from leaf cards, and we have individual uh, leaf geometry on this tree, which also makes for a very nice wind effect, and it looks good from all angles. While we're still in the modeler application, there's just a couple of things that you need to take note of. One is uh, the level of detail settings for this tree, which will see its behavior, how it affects its behavior within the reference application. And the second thing is make sure that embed geometry is enabled when you save the tree. Uh, this is uh, a necessary step for the game's pipeline. Okay, so now we're in the compiler application. It takes models from the modeler and prepares them for use for the SDK. Uh, it generates platform specific data such as compressed texture atlases, compressed geometry, and compiled shaders. Uh, the compiler can manage multiple atlases, uh, but in this run through we'll use one, and I'll add both the trees that we had in the modeler to it. So as you can see, it's automatically generated uh, texture atlases, diffuse, normal, specular mask, and some roughed out billboard uh, diffuse and normal atlases. We can tune what's been generated. For example, uh, these two textures here, the, the end caps of the branches are far too large for our needs. So we can just go over here and scale that one down to a half, scale the other one down to a half, and we've been given a much more reasonable atlas overall, 1K by 1K, uh, which suits our needs for this demo. We can also tune the billboards uh, that were generated, and we can go in here and we'll notice that the, the curly palms are, are smaller than the sugar maples, and that's because the scale of that tree is smaller as defined in the modeler. We can go in here and uh, just give them an arbitrary scale up to, to make them match the sugar maples. We can also go from eight uh, billboards to, to 12 if we like. Uh, we can also control the tessellation. Notice that the curly palm is very nicely tessellated, but the sugar maple uh, it could stand a few more triangles in there, and we can continue to do that. We can also uh, change the, the algorithm that's used for the tessellation. Now in terms of shaders and LOD, we have some control there. For example, we can bring go over to the curly palm and bring up the effect LOD dialog. And you can see the different materials that are in play here. And this particular tree has three LODs, and you can see that denoted here, here, and here. And this is the highest LOD to the lowest. And this is set up for forward rendering, so we can see that in the highest LOD we want per pixel uh, lighting, and then that's going to transition to per vertex. And we have lots of different effects that, that transition from, from high cost effects to low cost effects. And we have an LOD slider here that will control whether those LOD effects are smooth or whether they'll pop, and that affects all of the settings across the dialog. We also have, uh, per tree, uh, a wind LED dialog, and this is full wind effects as defined in the, the modeler down to just branch or just global or none, or you can go from full to none, and uh, it's a very gradual transition uh, between them, and, and we have specialized shaders that make sure that happens. Okay, so now we're ready to compile the trees. If we click compile up here, we'll see that we have a bunch of options that we can use to control uh, exactly how it compiles, but the most important one is, is which platform. And that platform, of course, dictates uh, how it will optimize uh, the output. And uh, there's lots of other things that you can choose from down here, but let's go ahead and hit compile. This process can take some time depending on the number of trees, the size of the textures, what compression algorithms you're using. So we're going to go ahead and time lapse through most of this. You can see here below lots of details about the shaders that have been generated. Um, they're all pre-compiled for DirectX 11 as, as our target platform, and now we're ready to see that run in engine with our SDK. Okay, so this is the world that we've created. You can see the curly palm that we added in the foreground and the sugar maple in the back. Uh, if you look at it, it looks exactly like it does in the modeler, uh, and, but in this case it's been optimized. The, the geometry, the textures, and the uh, uh, shaders have all been compiled specifically for the DirectX 11 platform. Uh, but it could just as well be 360 or PS3 or what have you. Uh, and as we start to move around the world, we, we see there's really a lot going on here in terms of LOD especially. Uh, there's a lot of shader LOD both in lighting effects and wind, and there's uh, geometry LOD going on. If I look at the distance here, uh, those are all the billboards in the scene, 
and these are the 3D trees, and they all gradually transition uh, between each other. So if I were to pick, say, uh, this billboard here, and I move towards it very gradually, you'll see that it'll transition to a fully windblown 3D tree uh, that looks exactly like uh, the wind behavior that we've defined in the modeler. Uh, another great effect about the, the billboards here is that they're normal maps. So as I move back away and turn these things into billboards again, um, and I move the, the light source, you can see that the, the billboards will adjust accordingly, and that helps to match the lighting uh, between the, the billboards and the, and the 3D trees. So this concludes our pipeline walkthrough. All of these tools and the SDK are available to Speedtree for Games evaluators. We encourage you to experiment with the pipeline and send us questions or comments to support at speedtree.com. Please let us know if there are any other topics you'd like for us to cover. Thanks for watching.